not planned either. Head coach Scott Drew is with us. His team will be going to the Sweet 16, and he's going to make a statement on this game before we go to questions for all four gentlemen from Baylor. Scott, please. Well, I thought uh, um, coming into this game, both teams very similar. Uh, great players, very resilient. They were one of the last to lose in the country. We were one of the last to lose in the country. Both of us play so well uh, um, being down. I actually joked with Andy. I said, do you want to be up at halftime? He said, no, 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 we like being down. But um, we knew it was going to come down to uh, 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 last couple minutes of the game, who could make uh, the key defensive stops. And I thought we really uh, uh, did a better job executing down the stretch when it mattered most. Questions for all the gentlemen. We've got two right here in the second row. John Wardaway for Tribune Hero. This is for Manu. Uh, you were scoreless until the last five minutes of the game, then you scored 12 points. Uh, what was happening? It looks like you were just kind of determined to take over at that point. Man, I just had to pick it up. Uh, I was struggling a little bit in the first half. Um, yeah, so I, I just had to pick it up. And my, my teammates and my coaches did a great job. Just uh, they, they kept believing in me. They kept me in the game. They trust me with the ball in my hands. So I just had to go out there and make plays. Cherry Hill, Baylor Bear Insider. Manu, uh, on that four-point play, talk me through that and – did he hit you on the arm, or what, what happened on that play? Yeah, he hit me on the arm uh, when I shot the three. That was a great uh, drive by Ish, and that was a great I – was, I, was, I was wide open, top of the key. Just a great pass by Ish. Man, until that three-pointer, you were 0 of 6. From where, where was the confidence coming from to take that shot in that situation? Just um, hard work. I know. I, I know. I'm a great shooter. You know. And today, I, cu I couldn't hit a shot. But um, like I said, my teammates kept kept trying to find me when I was open. They kept believing me. I just got to shoot. I, I just got to shoot when I'm open. Uh, right here for Jonathan uh, Tony Adami, CBS 24/7. Uh, when you fouled out, you kind of stayed on the court for, it seemed like, a few minutes. You were talking to your teammates. Kind of take me through that moment and, and what, what was going on right there emotionally, maybe. Uh, man, it was tough because uh, I know my teammates wanted me out there, and I wanted to be out there. And uh, I felt like me out there, had, we had a good chance to win. And uh, they were just coming up and telling me, man, we got you. Uh, we got it. We got it. Uh, we're going to finish this game. And uh, they did, and I'm thankful for them. Uh, we, like I said, we have complete trust in each other. I had complete trust in them. And uh, they got it done for me. So, left hand side, gentlemen. Uh, John Trentina, Associated Press. This is f for King. Uh, just talk about y your hot shooting, especially in the first half. Just you know, what what was the key for you? Uh, I think the key for me was my teammates and my coaches. Before the game, they told me be aggressive and you know, take shots. And you know, Mott had the ball first play and uh, kicked it out to me. He trusted in me and believed in me. And I knocked down the mm -hmm. shot, and you know, when, when your teammates believe in you like that, it just gives you all the confidence in the world. And I just uh, credit that to, to my teammates and my coaches and just believing in me and, you know, telling me to, you know, be aggressive, keep shooting, don't stop shooting. And, you know, when you, have, when you know you have people behind you, then you can do a lot of things. And as a result, I was able to go out there and just, uh, you know, put on a good performance. <laughs> uh, Jonathan, you kind of, we're struggling with foul trouble through much, most of the game. Uh, can you talk a little bit about how uh, King and Terry stepped up and kind of helped the team out when you were struggling? Uh, yeah, I think I got all my fouls in the second half. It was pretty crazy. Uh, I was just kind of playing like two uptight, I think, I guess. Uh, just trying to do everything, move everywhere. And, uh, and they stepped up like, just like they did in the first round. You know, uh, Terry is a great player, and uh, we know what he's capable of. And like I said, once King hit that first one, you know, it's clockwork from there. Uh, we all told him just keep shooting and uh, keep knocking them down, and uh, that's what he did. So, uh, man, we just love each other so much, and uh, without the whole team putting in something, you know, we wouldn't be right here. So, uh, it takes a team to win, and um, that's what we showed today. This is for Jonathan also. Um, you were a red shirt, 2014. Baylor made the Sweet 16. What's it mean to you to, to get back to that level? Man, it means the world. Just because uh, I was a part of that team, but I wasn't, I wasn't out there contributing, you know. But so it was just a little different. But um, just out being out here and contributing, you know, 
and out there just making plays for us to get to this point, man. It just means the world to me. And uh, just thankful for having teammates behind my back, just giving me the confidence to show what I can do. And, and just like I said, it takes a team to win. Uh, I didn't get, we didn't get here just by me doing what I do. It's just everybody, you know, everybody put in something. So just thankful for that. Scott, like they said, it takes a team. That small guard lineup that you went with, with Ish at the pot, how many times would you have used that? And, and how, you know, can you just talk about what that group did defensively down the stretch? Have we used that at all this year? <laughs> we were saving it. Um, I, I think, again, I always say the strength of our teams are depth. And as a coach, that's a challenge going into each and every game, finding out who's having a hot game and who's not. I mean, you look at last game, and it was Al, and it was TJ coming off the bench. Today, King was on fire, and uh, I, I love his answer because uh, Jay Mott saw him wide open, gave him a great assist, and trusted him, and then uh, that got him going. And uh, for us, that, that's what makes us a good team. Uh, going in, if, if Mott fouls out, um, Ish had foul trouble first half. It's not like uh, 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 we, we just have one player or two players. We have a team. And uh, as long as all season long that they put the team first, it's allowed them to sacrifice. And not every team does that because it's hard to, to one game not play many minutes and the next game be the star. So the only thing is uh, uh, I told King he was fresh because he didn't play a lot last game, right? <laughs> Right back there in the aisle. For Scott again, uh, eight years, four Sweet 16s, each team, uh, different motivation, obviously. I'm wondering, was there something that you said to them before this game? Is it X's and O's, or is it like a motivational speech? How does that go? No, nah, there's no speeches at work. Um, otherwise, every coach would use them. It's really about the players and how much they want to sacrifice for the team. Uh, all year long, very simple. Great leadership, great chemistry, great depth, and they deserve all the credit. We are halfway through the session. We have four questions up. Go right here, please. Scott, uh, you were talking about Manu struggling some before those last five minutes. Uh, obviously, you had a lot of confidence in him, too. Can you just talk about what he did? Well, I mean, in, every day in practice, we all see Manu practice, and he spends a lot of time on his game, and that's why he's a great shooter. So when he misses a good look, for us, as long as he's getting good looks, we feel great because we know more are going to go in than not. What I was happy with was first half, he had four assists, zero turnovers, and played good defense. So you can affect the game on both ends of the court, and you can affect the game if you're not making shots. And um, I mean, Manu does a great job feeding the post because people have to close out to him, and that allows uh, uh, J. Mott, TJ, Joe, and them to get good looks. Coach, saw before the game you had a congratulatory message for Kansas after their win earlier today, and then the other day, uh, before, after you guys played in the first round, you had a tweet saying, you know, Baylor fans go out and cheer for Kansas. Any reason for that beyond just pride in the Big 12? No, it's Big 12 basketball. So, I mean, it's a grind. The last three years, we were the number one conference this year, second-ranked conference. And I know some people have said, well, we haven't had as many teams advance in the postseason. And, I mean, if it's not conference time, we're cheering for each other. And it was great having uh, – the last time we were in this situation, it was in San Antonio and Iowa State beat uh, North Carolina right before us, and we could have two Big 12 teams from there. So, um We'd love to uh, see everybody at the Final Four together. Then we won't cheer for each other. <laughs> Question for Manu. When you uh, transferred in from Miami, you were hoping for this kind of opportunity. But when the team got to number one, I remember you didn't make a big deal of it from a personal standpoint. What does making the Sweet 16 mean to you? Oh, it's a blessing. I've been in college for three years. I never made it to a tournament. So it's all new to me. And, um, I got a, none of this would have been possible without Coach Drew believing in me and uh, his coaching staff and the players believing in me. So I'm just thankful. I used to watch that on TV. Um, never been able to just play one game in the NCAA tournament. So it's a blessing. Anything else for the gentleman? Yes, we have about two minutes. Here's a good question here. It's a lot of pressure there. Uh, Jonathan, what about, I have not, airport. Jonathan, what about, and maybe for each one of the guys, what about just going to Madison Square Garden? What does that mean? That's kind of the mecca of basketball. What does that mean for each of you guys? Jonathan first, Manu, and then King. 
Um, it means a lot, you know. Uh, we just just the history of that place, and uh, get a chance to go and play there, and especially get a win there, man. That mean the world to me. So, I uh, love the game of basketball, and uh, you know, you dream of moments like this, being able to play in Madison Square Garden. So I'm just thankful for the opportunity, and uh, we're gonna take advantage of it. Like Jim, I said, you 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 dream for a moment like that. Um, it's a huge blessing, uh, to just to to even play one game, and even better if we get the dub. So. Very thankful for it. Uh, yeah, similar to you know what my teammate said is you know as a kid you dream about moments like this and you know for it to be here is is a blessing. So you know we we don't take it for granted and you know like we said in the locker room we're not done. So we have more work to do, but it's really a blessing to be able to play in the gym that a lot of people don't get the opportunity to play in. Final question right here. Scott, you've had an awful lot of good point guards on your Baylor teams. What was it about Manu that you saw when he was looking to transfer from Miami that made you think that he could be that guy, and, and how did that whole situation play out? Well, well, first and foremost, uh, he, had, he had a lot of talent, um, really could read the ball screen well, could really score it, and we've had a lot of point guards who could score it and um, play off ball screens well that have been successful in our system from Pierre to Tweedy to Kenny Cherry to Curtis Geralds. I mean, so he fit that mold. But what, I, what I've been really impressed with is uh, uh, his humility. Um, uh, he cares about his teammates. Uh, he wants them to do well. Uh, I know as a coach, we always want more from our guys. But uh, he's willing. He's coachable. He wants to get better. He wants to learn. And his best basketball is ahead of him. Uh, but uh, he's had a major improvement defensively since he's been here. He's able to impact the game on that end. So uh, uh, he's doing a lot, of, a lot of really good things. And um, today, in the last five minutes, he did a lot of good things. OK, gentlemen, thank you very much. And best of luck in the Big Apple. Thank you. Thank you. you guys have a good night. Switch it out. The USC Trojans are here. Head coach Andy Enfield, Jamezi Metu, and Jordan McLaughlin represent the Trojans. We're going to have Andy start off with a statement on the game. Then we'll go to questions for all three gentlemen from USC. Andy, please. Unfortunately, we came out on the wrong end today. The guys played extremely hard. Had a successful season, set a school record with 26 wins. We're very proud of our players and the way they've developed. And give Baylor credit, they played an excellent game as well. It went right down to the last minute with a two-point game. And uh, we're proud of our players. And, and also, uh, I thought Baylor played extremely hard. It was just a great college basketball game. Thank you. Start right here. Yeah, quick one for Andy. Uh, John Hoover, the franchise. Um, you guys have actually thrived or seem to have thrived off of being behind, making rallies, things like that. Uh, did it catch up with you today, with the way, the way, um, specifically the way Baylor was able to pull away? Well, we took a four-point lead twice. 
with under seven, six minutes left. And then they went on that run where uh, they made a, they got an offensive rebound and then they got a four point play and then another basket. So uh, we, we were right there where we needed to be in the last five minutes and had to lead. Uh, but it went back and forth and you, uh, uh, when you have te two teams that are as evenly matched as our teams uh, uh, were and are, uh, that uh, you know, I, I think uh, there were there were some runs in this game. So we, we didn't. We, you know, it was a five-point game at halftime. That's that's not a lot. And we came out, and then we eventually took the lead. So this this wasn't one of those games where we were way behind. This was a game that was uh, there for the taking if we would have executed down the stretch. Chad Conan, the Sports Exchange coach. Uh, Motley picked up his fourth foul with about eight minutes left. You guys had, had just taken, uh, I think, the four-point lead right there. Did you feel like you had them on the ropes and, and could kind of get some momentum down the stretch there? Well, we felt, we felt like we were playing very well. Uh, we, we made a defensive error, and they made a three, and then we came down and made a three to put it back to four, and then they came down and scored. And uh, that's, uh, they went small uh, with Miley out of the game, and uh, they, they, were, uh, they relied on some other people, and they stepped up, uh, their point guard stepped up and scored down the stretch and, and uh, Matson had a big game and uh, so you know, when your leading scorer goes out it's an opportunity for other players sometimes uh, to to score the ball and that's what they did John Tranchina Associated Press uh, Tremisi just talk about your game you had a big game there uh, just talk about what was working for you um, I just felt uh, my teammates were giving me the ball in the right spots, and I was just uh, I was just trying to make plays. But um, I mean, it came it came down to us uh, getting getting stops on on the other end, and uh, we just we weren't able to do that, and uh, we did, we fell short. Stay. The Associated Press, thank you. <clears throat> Coach, just talk about his game and, and how he helped, you know, spark you guys offensively. Well, Chemezi was voted most improved player in the Pac-12 this year for a good reason. You saw his skill development at his size, and he's had a tremendous season for us with Benny Boatwright being out 18 games. In fact, Jordan, the two players here sitting, led us uh, – they're, they're two of our four veterans, uh, even though they're only sophomore and junior, uh, with Elijah Stewart. And then when Benny went down with his injury, uh, they really led us the entire season. And you saw that tonight. Uh, but it's great for players to develop like Chemezi and Jordan. Uh, they, they've had great careers so far. They've been to two straight NCAA tournaments. Uh, they went farther this year than they did last year. Uh, and. They're, they're uh, the building blocks of our program, and they, they just uh, are, are, have turned into just outstanding players and even better leaders. Coach, uh, Lacan had, had had some injuries late in the season, and it's been a while since he had an explosive spurt like he had during the last five minutes. But was it part of your game plan to kind of assign somebody to him or, 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 or look out for what he could do? Yeah, he had struggled early. He was, ended up one for six from the three. The only one he made was when we fouled him on that four-point play, and then he got in the lane a couple of times, and he's a good player. Uh, you know, he, I think he's rated his average. He had 12 points and five assists, so it's about right what he averages. Uh, he struggled early with his shooting, and, and then down, like I said, when Motley went out, someone else had to step up, and, and he sure did. Anything else for the gentleman from USC? Okay. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Best thank of luck.